We're reading from the fourth proverb. Today is the fourth. Labor Day here in uh, Jesuit America. Yeah. If you happen to have an authorized version of the scriptures, please go ahead and grab it. Uh, this video is specifically for the saints of the Church of God. Okay? If you happen to have your authorized version of the scriptures, go ahead and get it. And read along with me at the verses we will be looking at. Read along with me, word for word, verse by verse. Uh, be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Read along with me, because as you know, the mouth will go quicker than the brain sometimes, okay? Why we should never fear man. First, Proverbs 4, verses 23 on to verse 27. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a froward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder! Think, ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. And I love this. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. This, of course, is my personal favorite uh, proverb. Um, my personal favorite for that very verse, right, a uh, couple of verses. Uh, ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. And of course we see something this a little bit more expounded upon in the Sermon on the Mount, which we are looking at for our instruction in righteousness. You've got to remember the Sermon on the Mount doctrinally is not for us today. Okay? Matthew chapter 7 verses 13 on verse, uh, verse 14. Enter ye in at the straight forward gate. For wide is the gate, that, and broad is the way, that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Hmm. Because straight is the gate. Straight is the gate. And what did Proverbs 4 have to say to us today? What did Proverbs 4 have to say to us today? <laughs> yes. Verse 25. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Because straight, in uh, Matthew 7, verse 14. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. And of course, back in Proverbs 4. 26 and 27, ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. And where it says here, enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Dear brethren, we do have to keep in mind that Satan is all about flesh. He savors the things that be of man, not the things that be of God, okay? And Satan uses the arm of flesh to his advantage, okay? We have to remember that. Go to Isaiah chapter 51. Isaiah chapter 51. Isaiah chapter 51. Verses 9 on to verse 16. There are many brethren out there who are afraid and get intimidated when put in situations where they could be used to the Lord as a witness. They get afraid of certain things or whatnot. And I understand that. I understand that. And also Satan is using the things of this world to make man afraid. Afraid of what? Afraid of the government. Okay? Afraid of losing all things when we are told in Scripture, having food and raiment therewith, let us be content. Okay? Got to remember, keep in mind, Personally, myself, hello, hi. This is a luxury. Having a roof over my head? <laughs> like the one comment 
you know, listening to the fan. Got a fan going, keeping it a little cooler in here. You can, got clean clothes, got a fridge full of food. That's what's necessary. That is what is necessary. And Paul admonishes us, having food and raiment therewith, let us be content. See, Satan uses the fear of man and the fear of the world to his advantage. When we, saints, or saved, born again, converted, seal them to the day of redemption, we are not to have we are not to have the fear of man. We are not to have the fear of man. Because what does it say in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7? Hmm? What does it say in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7? For God hath not given us us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind okay Isaiah 51 verses 9 on to verse 16 if you're you're one of these uh, Christians or you're of the world this doesn't make any sense to you why is that because you're probably if you're a Christian uh, you're probably not sealed until the day of redemption meaning you're not a true convert Okay? There are those saints who want to refer to themselves as Christians. They're just as saved in you as you and I are, brother. They want to attribute themselves a worldly thing. That's, that's their problem, not ours. Okay? Okay? But, all right, for those of us who are saved, sealed, going to be redeemed, okay? What do we got to fear of men? You know? I've never really fretted man much. <laughs> That's not to say that, for example, I'm actually 5'7", um, just 200 pounds. That's not to say if I were to come across someone who is 6'4", 270 pounds, you know, a walking uh, brick house. That's not to say that I wouldn't be a little like, oh, okay. Or you come across a whole bunch of kids and you know that one of the kids has a, a gun in his waistband. Okay, that could, you know. We're not supposed to be flippant, careless, okay? <laughs> We're not supposed to be careless, okay? We are to be careful for nothing. Why? Why? Isaiah 51, 9 on verse 16. Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord, not the arm of man. Not the arm of flesh, arm of the Lord. Okay? Awake as in the ancient days, in the generations of old. Art thou not it which hath cut Rahab, or Rahab, and wounded the dragon? Reference unto the devil. Okay? Art thou not it which hath dried the sea, the waters of the great deep, that hath made the depths of the sea a way for the ransom to pass over. Reference unto the crossing of Israel. Okay. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return. Different dispensation under the law. This is specifically being referenced unto the children of Israel. Our instruction in righteousness. God has taken us saved people out of Egypt. We are the redeemed of the Lord. Okay. All right. Our body is not yet redeemed. But we sit with the Lord in heavenly places. Okay, if I die, I'm going to go be with the Lord. You kill me, tough guy, I'm going to go be with the Lord. Okay? All right? Therefore, this is our instruction in righteousness. Therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion. And everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy. And sorrow and mourning shall flee away. Verse 12. I, even I am he. And what did the Lord Jesus Christ say? Unless ye believe I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Mm -hmm. Making reference unto himself that he is God the Father. Okay? <clears throat> anyway. I, even I am he that comforteth you. Comforteth you. The comforter, you know, the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit. Okay? Who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that should die? And of the Son of Man which shall be made as grass. 
And, and, and for that, hold your place here. Isaiah 40, verses 6 on to verse 8. The voice said, cry. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh. The flesh profiteth nothing. Okay. Uh, if, if you think you're Christ and you can live a life sinlessly in this flesh, hence sanctifying the sinful flesh, which Christ did because he never sinned, even though the word was made flesh, he was in sinful flesh, he sanctified that sinful flesh because he never sinned, okay? If you think you can do that, wow, <laughs> wow. So you're a little Christ, huh? Yeah, yeah. The voice said, and the voice said, cry. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass. And all the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withereth, grows old, sags. The flower fadeth, because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, wither away, grows old. Okay? Sags. Okay? The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Like that quote from Macbeth. You know, man is in a vain shoe, vain shoe a fleeking something, uh, which struts his stuff, uh, struts, his, struts his hour upon the stage, and then is heard of no more. It is the tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. I just, for those of you who are familiar with Shakespeare, and you're like, ugh, Brad, I, sorry, sorry. I don't have Shakespeare committed to memory, okay? Let's go back to Isaiah 51, okay? Verse 13. We're going to talk about verse 12 a little bit more, but we had to immediately go to Isaiah 40. And forgettest the Lord thy maker that hath stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth and has feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor, as if he were ready to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor? Hmm. Where is the fury of the oppressor? Hmm. As if he's ready to destroy. The captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosed, and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his bread should fail. But I am the Lord thy God, that divided the sea, whose waves roared. The Lord of hosts is his name. Saints. And I have put my words in thy mouth, and I have covered thee in the shadow of mine hand, that I may plant the heavens, and lay the foundations of the earth, and say unto Zion, Thou art my people. And for you and I today, saints, church of the living God, he has put his words into our mouths. We are all in the ministry of reconciliation, having the word of reconciliation. Why are we afraid of a man? Hmm? Granted, granted, there are, you know, like I said, I'm 5'7", 200 pounds, and you come across a 6'4", 270 pound, you know, walking guy like, you're like, oh, okay. But here's the question. Here's the, que here's the deeper question. Why are you in that situation? Are you in that situation because of yourself? Or because the Lord has put you in that situation? Think about it. How many of us, because we have gone into the flesh walked according to the flesh, have put ourselves in situations where that the Lord didn't necessarily put us in and we face a physical, fleshly consequence? Hmm? Why are you in the situation you are in? Hmm? Are you there because the Lord put you there and you're getting persecution because of the Lord's sake? Or are you like the horse? Are you like the horse? <laughs> Job 39. There are a lot of people. What's the saying? 
Fools who say in their heart there is no God rush in where wise men will tread lightly. There are a lot of people out there who have the wrong kind of not fearing. There are a lot of tough guys out there who are not afraid of men. They're not afraid of men. Maybe, maybe they can put on a guillotine choke. I know how to do that. Okay. Maybe they can apply an arm bar or a Kimura. I also know how to do that. Maybe they can put on an, a drop toe hold or a heel hold or something like that. I also know how to do that. Okay. All right. And that can give man a confidence when someone can get big and whatnot. But remember what we saw in Isaiah chapter 40, dear friends? Okay. All right. What did we see in Isaiah chapter 40? Verse 7. The grass withereth. You're not going to be at your tip top all your life. Man can strive to do that as much as he can, but sooner or later, the law of thermodynamics, everything starts to break down. Now, granted, there are people who are in better health than others. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. But see, that's all fleshly. That's all fleshly. These people who are brave because their flesh is strong, they know a little something, something on how to apply a kimura or something like that. Or can disarm someone if someone comes at them with a baseball bat or something like that. That, that I ain't saying that isn't wrong to be able to defend yourself in a given situation. But why are you in those situations? Hmm? Why? Why? Job 39, verses 19 on to verse 25. We've read this before. Hast thou given the horse strength? Hmm? Hast thou clothed his neck with thunder? Canst thou make him afraid as a grasshopper? The glare, the glory of his nostrils is terrible. A big horse, a Percheron, a Bergeron or a Clydesdale, riding into battle, fearless. But a grasshopper, this is, I've seen this. I've worked with horses before. A little, you know, this tale of the elephant being afraid of the mouse. Okay? Afraid of the littlest things. That's true. Any of you people that have worked with horses, you know that. You know that. A horse will go headlong without fear. But here a little grasshopper or cricket jumps on it. You'll see this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He paweth in the valley and rejoiceth in his strength. He goeth on to meet the armed men. He mocketh at fear. And is not affrighted, neither turneth he back from the sword. The quiver rattleth against him, the glittering spear and the shield. He swalloweth the ground with fierceness and rage, neither believeth he that it is the sound of the trumpet. Talk about, um, about the horse um, and comparing this unto some people that have a lot of confidence in what? Themselves. The, excuse me. This flesh. What they know. The confidence is in themselves. And hey, like I've said before, for example, that disgusting scoundrel devil Joe Rogan, who could pummel me in, uh, he can put an amplacha on me and just kill me in a heartbeat, just like that. Should I be afraid of him? Because he can do that? No. Should I be afraid that you are, you know, are versed in Brazilian jiu-jitsu? No. Now, would it be the smartest thing to go up against something like that willfully for the wrong reason? Yeah. Yeah. But see, in context of the Lord opening up a door and you meet with that opposition. Okay? Let's continue here. <clears throat> He saith among the trumpets, ha <laughs> ha, and he smelleth the battle afar off, <laughs> the thunder of the captains, and the shouting. And what's interesting about this, you go to Psalm 32, Psalm 32, Psalm 32, verses 6 on to verse 9. 
Hey, I can be very stubborn, okay? I can be very stubborn. I can be very bullheaded myself. I could be like the horse. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Okay, okay. But we got to remember this, brethren. Uh, Psalm 32, verse 6 on to verse 9. For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh him. Look at that verse. Okay. Think of Nehemiah when he was before the king and he prayed to the God, uh, to the Lord of heaven, God of heaven. He did like what they, I've heard this said, and I don't have a better term for it, a bullet prayer like you're in a situation it's like, okay, Lord, I've, I've been there before. Okay. You're in a situation it's like, oh, wow, Lord. Okay. Here we go. Help me. <laughs> and, and also... When thou, may, when thou mayest be found, surely in the floods of great waters, they shall not come nigh unto him. A lot of times in scripture, you will see mountains being referenced unto man, like unto mankind and stuff like that. You know, they are in their mountains, strong, high up, arrogant, you know, not boasting or not, uh, or not moving or anything. You read in Revelation chapter um, 17, verse 15, that the waters were likened unto nations, languages, and tongues. Hmm? Think about that. Okay, let's continue. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me with shouts. Thou shalt compass me about, excuse me, with songs of deliverance, Salah. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Question. Are you in a situation because you put yourself there? Or is it truly of the Lord that you may be in a situation? Which one is it? Which one is it? Be ye not as the horse. I'm saying that that way purposely. Yes. Okay. So leave it alone. <laughs> Be ye not as the horse. Or as the mule. Which have no understanding. We just saw about the horse. Headlong. But a little grasshopper. I've told you about how, you know, I've dealt with mules Asses, you know, I've dealt with them before. Some of the most insolent, stupid, arrogant. A mule is arrogant. Yeah, they can take the the link out of a chain link fence and go stand there by the feed room and just look at you like, ha 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 ha! Look what I did. Be not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit bit and bridle. Lest they come near unto thee. Oh, isn't that pretty interesting, huh? Isn't that pretty interesting, huh? Let's go back now to Isaiah chapter 51. And let's, let's unpack a little bit of uh, verse 12. And let's encompass 13. I, even I am he that comforteth you. Who art thou that shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die? And of the Son of Man, which shall be made as grass. And of course, what do you think of right away? Well, one of the things that came to mind right away for myself when Lord and I were putting this together was uh, Proverbs 29, verse 25. Proverbs 29, verse 25. <laughs> uh, the fear of man bringeth a snare. But whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Want to see an example of this scripturally? Go to Galatians chapter, where is that? 2. Go to Galatians chapter 2. Peter. Galatians chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 13. We talked about this. Uh, we have talked about this, uh, you know, how dear James kind of struggled with the 
us and them mentality when we are all one in Christ Jesus. Even though James, uh, the Lord gave him to write the book of James, which is for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble, yes. But James did struggle. You can read Acts chapter 21. Okay, you can read that for yourself. James struggled with that us and them. You know, well, we being Hebrews, we have a little bit more than... No, that's not the case for today. Okay, bless his heart and soul, and I don't mean that in the southern way. Okay, James struggled with that. Here's a little bit more proof on that fact, but let's read this. Galatians 2, 11 on verse 13. <clears throat> Where are we? But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. Peter who was in Christ before Paul. Okay? For before that certain came from James, our beloved James, okay, he did eat with the Gentiles. But, when they were come, he withdrew, withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision fearing public opinion. And the Jesuit order and her, uh, Mystery Babylon, uh, her, and her army, the Jesuit order, and her soldiers uh, use that thing of public opinion quite well, don't you? Yeah, yeah. That's why we don't um, publicly, visually respond to them. It ticks them off too, which is really fun to do. <laughs> but anyway, what does it say here? Fearing them which were of the circumcision. What happened? What happened? The fear of man bringeth a snare. Okay? This was Peter having a major oopsie. Okay? And because Peter did the same thing, what happened? Fear of man bringeth a snare. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas, the son of consolation, I believe, also was carried away with their dissimulation. Yeah, that's... Yeah. You can also argue uh, that Paul, you know, Paul, got the snot kicked out of him for the Lord's sake in Acts chapter 21. He compromised. Was Paul afraid of man? No. No. But he did compromise. Now, was that out of a fear or wanting to make nice? But as far as, you know, Peter, he had the fear of man there. Like he did at uh, when they uh, took the Lord and he was warming himself, okay? And they, you know, three times, it's like, you're one of them. And to prove that he wasn't of them, what did he do? He cussed and he swore. See, I'm not like him. Blah, 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 blah. Fear of man. Fear of man. Okay? And see, there's a difference. Like I said, there are a lot of these tough guys who are not afraid of man. But they are not afraid of man out of the wrong premise. Why? Because they are confident in themselves. In themselves. See, there's a different dynamic there. We fear the Lord, because why? The Lord lives in us. Okay? The Lord lives in us. Most of these people that we encounter, about 9 out of 10 of them, if they have no fear of man, what is? why do they have that? Because they have a confidence in themselves or in a number. Like, hey, there are more of us with them and whatnot. Okay? All right? But we today, there's a totally different dynamic there, brethren. They're, they're, go to Deuteronomy 31. Go to Deuteronomy 31. And brethren, I understand. I understand. It is, it can be intimidating. It can be a, a little scary going out and witnessing and talking to someone. But we have the Lord within us. What are we going to fear about someone who's dirt like you and me? Huh? Okay, oh yeah, okay, he can shoot in on me and, and put a heel hold on me. So what? I can do that. Okay? I can do that. Okay? So, yeah, they know a little whatever. I can do, you know, I can grab your wrist and put you in a Kimura just as fast as anyone else. Okay? Does that mean I have confidence in me? 
God forbid. Deuteronomy 31. Deuteronomy, and see, that's the flaw of what is known as martial arts. Okay? Look, uh, being able, there's, there is a difference between being able to appropriately, correctly defend yourself than rather being just some uh, a Neanderthal that swings a club, even though you would do that, that would be quite effective. Okay, there there is a difference there. But what what is the base? What is the foundation? Think about that in, in light of our enemies who know how to use the system. Okay, the system. Okay, so many of these devils that we encounter, especially on YouTube or on other platforms, they can work this system really well, They're really well, and they know all the little tricks of the system. Why? Because they are part of that system. Their fear is the fear of man, not the fear of the Lord. But in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 3 and verse 6. Now, remember, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. But... The Lord thy God, he will go over before thee, and he will destroy these nations from before thee, and thou shalt possess them. And Joshua, he shall go over before thee, as the Lord has said. What are we reading to on verse 6? And the Lord shall do unto them as he did to Shehom and to Og, kings of the Amorites, and unto the land of them whom he destroyed. And the Lord shall give them up before your face, that ye may do unto them according unto all the commandments which I have commanded you. Verse 6. Be strong, dear brethren, and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Of course, what do you think of right away, huh, brother, sister? What do you think of? Matthew 28. <laughs> Matthew 28, right? Matthew 28. Matthew 28, verses 18 on to 20. After the death, burial, and resurrection. And, and, and somebody make known to the little stupid head Christy Burke, please. <laughs> Never mind about that. But And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, singular name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. There is only one name given among men, given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. Okay, there's not three names. There is only one name, Jesus Christ. Okay? All right? Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. Okay? If God be for us, we can be again. There's, there's a ton of verses that are not going to be in this video, because that's this, I mean, do a little study on your own time, okay? All right? This is just uh, to remind you and to encourage you. Don't be afraid of man. Okay? Like I said, I don't fret man much. And you, and you know what? Here's another thing, brethren. Okay? Here's another thing. You got to remember here in America, America is given over to feminism. Okay? And the order has been messed up here in America. And um, feminism teaches... God, woman, child, pet, man. What happens? Uh, let us be reminded of Elisha. Elijah, who is a man as, as like passions as you and I. But he prayed. Okay? But let's remember this one thing about Elijah and keep this in our minds. Okay? When it comes to the fear of man. The fear of mankind. Because what can happen? What can happen? There are some uh, sp specific tough guys, especially here on YouTube, who I bet you, when confronted with a Jezebel, they would cower. 
First Kings 19. See, women are your oppressors. And children rule over you. That's what happens when you get your fear out of line. When you fear flesh. When you fear dirt. And you don't fear the Lord. Okay? When you have the your fear out of whack. Okay. And Ahab, verses 1 on to verse 3 in 1 Kings 19. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Uh, Elijah basically, in for the Lord, did a bloodbath of all the false prophets. He, he did. He stood in front of all these false prophets, and there was a bloodbath. He killed them all. Okay, Elijah, Elijah. Then Jezebel, a type of the Roman Catholic Church. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And Hollywood does a lot of things like that. When you got a man who's like a, a husband or a man or whatever, and um, Hollywood, when the woman gets mad, then the guy's like, oh. We, we are supposed to treat women as the weaker vessel. And remember, woman means of man. Okay? The woman was created for Adam. Adam was not created for the woman. Okay? Christy Burke and all you feminazis out there. Okay, that doesn't make you lesser of any kind. What it means is that you have a specific purpose in the sight of God. That doesn't make you less in his eyes, but you were designed for a different purpose. Okay? Verse 3. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. Let's read verse 2 again, uh, in case I've skipped it. <laughs> then Jezebel sent messengers unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods be gods do to me, and more also, note that lowercase g, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. Elijah, great man of God. But yet he ran because of the threat of Jezebel. Was his fear truly out of whack? Not really, not with Elijah in context, but remember, he was uh, of like passions as you and I. Come on! Paul didn't fear man, but when he was surrounded and about to get stoned, you don't think there was a little reservation in there? Within were fear, or without were fightings, within were fears, okay? These tough guys who fear nothing, they claim to. Somewhere deep down in there, they're a coward. And they base that not fearing man off of them themselves. It's like the pot calling the kettle black. But see, you and I, dear saint, totally different dynamic. It's a totally different dynamic. Okay? And, and again, Isaiah 51, verse 12. I, even I, am he that comforteth you. Who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die? And of the son of man which shall be made of as grass. Okay? And forgettest the Lord thy maker that hath stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth, and has feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor? Are you afraid of the government? Are you afraid of man? Are you afraid of your enemies? As if he were ready to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor? First Tim uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Now, we looked at two Old Testament examples. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. One Old Testament example, because in Matthew 28, that was this dispensation. Excuse me for saying that. That was after the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? All right? Old Testament. Deuteronomy 31. The Lord goes before you. Okay? 
Matthew 28. I am with you always, even unto the end of the world, not the end of the age. Okay? Because what is that saying? When the Lord saves you today in this dispensation, you are eternally secure. Once saved, always saved. Okay? And when if God before us, who can be against us? But see, there again, you have to weigh carefully what's before you. Are you going out in your own power? Or is the Lord the one sending you out? Okay? 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 13. This is a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. If we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. What does that mean? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Now, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency, excellency of speech, which a lot of these Christians like Calvinists, Catholics, and free gracers like to use, or of wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Who is actually saved? Now, there are those, we covered this in the previous video, there are those which are blatantly obvious, but there are those where it takes time where the Lord will show you things. It's like, you might get this thing, it's like, okay, there's something with this guy, I'm going to wait for a while, then a little while long, uh, after that, the Lord will reveal to you, this is why. Oh, he's not saved. Unlike these free gracers, well, I don't know their heart. But you, you, a saint of the church of the living God, which preached the gospel, all right, you're lost. Okay, but we don't know Gandhi's heart. I don't know Arturo Sosa's heart. You guys are a joke. But, see, Paul, who's saved? Who is saved? Okay? Paul's like, For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. What is he saying? Who is actually a saint? Who is actually saved among you? Okay? Like I said, we covered this in the previous video. Okay? Uh, there are some guys that are like, Dude, dude, give me a break. Like Christy Burke. I don't know how many uh, people tried to tell me that, well, she once believed she's saved but messed up. That little idiot was never saved. Okay? Drop it. Okay? You're making a fool out of yourself. Okay? But Galatians 2, verses 20 on to verse 21. Okay? I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. The Holy Ghost is that spirit. Okay? The Lord is that spirit. Okay? Okay? Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain by what you do. Okay? All right? So Paul right there is saying, who is saved? And right here back in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11, this is a faithful saying. If we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Dead to yourself. Okay? Broken, contrite, and fearing the Lord. Okay? Which is, which is a requirement of salvation. Which the free gracer always skips over. Okay? Always. Always. You, you guys are... You guys are crazy. See, you guys, you're banking off the ignorance of people. Okay? That's why you guys are so successful today. Okay? But, it is a faithful saying, if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Saved! You have to die in order to become a new creature. Okay? Verse 12. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. Now, that's not talking about salvation. That is not talking about salvation. How do you prove this? 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Let's read verses 1 on to verse 6. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. And ye are puffed up. And have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. Well, we don't know his heart. We're not judging you. That's when you need to come in amongst us. Okay? 
For verily I absent, for I verily as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already as though I were present, concerning him that hath so done this deed. One moment, dear brethren. Okay, let's continue. Verse 4. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together, and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, the power of a resurrected life, okay? Two, deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the, excuse me, flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Okay? What is that talking about? You deny the Lord. By not doing what he says, or walking according how he walks, or wants us to walk today in this dispensation. Okay, going to places you shouldn't be going. Putting wicked things before your eyes. Your hands touching things that they shouldn't. You doing contrary to what God said. Okay? But yet you came to him and are truly saved. But yet you're denying him by walking aright according to the scriptures. You can lose your testimony. You can lose your health. You can lose your possessions. You can lose uh, fellowship. You can lose all kinds of things. You will not lose salvation because it's not your salvation to lose. Okay? Once saved, always saved. You can lose a whole lot of things. But if you come to the Lord according to His, uh, His way, the way of the cross, death to yourself, being a man, taking responsibility that it's your fault that he was crucified and having the hell scared out of you and crying out on, on, his, on him, crying to him for his mercy and he saves you, you're eternally secure. You're once saved, always saved. You cannot lose your salvation because it's not yours to lose. It is a gift of God by grace through faith. But of course, if you you know you save yourself uh, by doing something like through Catholicism, which is salvation without assurance, uh, or you're a, a members-only Calvinist, or you save yourself because you just believe, right? What happens if you don't believe anymore, right? It's crazy, okay? You can lose lots of things, but if you come to the Lord truly according to His dictate, you are once saved, always saved, okay? If, okay, if we believe, okay, verse 12, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. It's a suffering to walk according to the scriptures. Haven't you noticed? But what does Christianity say? Compromise, 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 compromise. You're, you just believe. Yes, you shouldn't do these things, but don't worry about it. Okay? Okay? If we suffer, we shall also reign with him we deny him he will also deny us and besides verse 13 proves it anyway if we believe not yet he abideth faithful he cannot deny himself and of course Ephesians chapter 1 again Ephesians chapter 1 okay Ephesians chapter 1 verses 12 on to verse 14 Ephesians chapter 1 Verses 12 on to verse 14. That we, saved people, should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye, ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Colossians chapter 1, verses 23 on to 29, the close. If ye continue in the faith grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. And what is our hope? The blessed hope. Jesus Christ, he is our hope. Okay? If ye continue in the faith grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard, and which we and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, 
and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. He will not deny himself because we are of his bones and of his flesh. Okay? We belong to Christ. We are not little Christs. Okay? Watch out for that. We are not little Christs. All right? We are not, but we belong to him. All right? Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill his word. To fulfill, excuse me, the word of God. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. They were not looking forward to the cross in Genesis, in Exodus, even though the Passover, the Pesach, does have, you know, a type with the cross and the blood on the sides and the top. Yes, they were not looking forward to the cross. Don't believe that lie, okay? All right. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, wisdom, and unto man, he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Job 28, 28. Okay? That we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Not sinlessly perfect. Uh, remember, if, if Paul preached sinless perfection, what do you do with Romans chapter 7? That was before he was saved. Are you? You're on drugs. You are on crack cocaine. No, he's not referencing before he was saved. He was talking present tense. Okay, saved people, saints, sin. Okay, get over yourself. Sinless perfection. You want to be sinlessly perfect? You got to die. Okay, die and go to be with the Lord. Okay, we die to ourselves. Yes, that doesn't make us sinlessly perfect. Very cute way to twist something I say. Very cute, very cute. Okay. Verse 29, Wherefore, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mighty, mightily. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out. Our salvation is the Lord Jesus Christ. We are working out what he has put in himself, that we may live our lives according to the scriptures. That's what that means, okay? Okay? Psalm 39. Psalm 39. Psalm 39. I said in my head, I said I will take heed to my ways, that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. Yeah, if wicked people who don't want to hear the truth, kayate. Okay? I was dumb with silence. Dumb doesn't mean lack of intelligence. Dumb means that you cannot or don't speak. That's what dumb means. I held my peace even from good and my sorrow was stirred. See, if someone doesn't want to hear the truth, don't even bother. Don't even bother. But the Lord will put you in situations where he's like, hey, that, that, this is, come on, Come on. Come on. Okay. My heart was hot within me while I was musing, thinking, the fire burn. Then spake I with my tongue. Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know how frail I am. You know, the biggest individual you will meet physically, uh, you give them a shot to the stones, they're probably going to go down like a stone. Just saying. Okay? Behold, thou hast made my days as an hand breadth, and mine age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man in his best state is altogether vanity. Grass that withereth away. Okay? At his most, man will live 120 years. Okay? Moses, 
And if he live 80 years by reason of strength, yet his, his days are sorrow. Okay? Okay? What is 120 years to the I am? Remember, we're bound by time. God isn't. Surely every man walketh in a vain shoe. Surely they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them. <laughs> Most likely the Vatican, right? Yeah. And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. Now, note this dispensational difference. Okay? Our hope is in the Lord today. But we have the Lord within us. Our hope is in the Lord who is in us. So if God be with us, who can be, with, uh, who can be against us? That's Romans 8. Okay, like I said, there are a ton of verses that could have been used. Do a little study on your own, okay? Deliver me from all my transgressions. Make me not the reproach of the foolish. Those who behave, act, speak. As if they say in their heart there is no God. I was dumb. I opened not my mouth because thou didst it. There are kind of, I've been in many a situation where it's like, dude, she doesn't want to hear it. He doesn't want to hear the truth. And when someone doesn't want to hear the truth, you're casting your pearls before swine. That's when the physical witness of how you react, how you behave, comes into play. When they won't hear you by your words, how do you live your life? How does the word, the scripture, manifest itself by how you live? That's why you got to watch out for these free gracers. Okay? That's why. There's no change in them because a majority of them, the, pretty much all of them, aren't safe. Okay, why? Because their strength stemmeth from themselves. Okay? Remove thy stroke away from me. I am consumed by the blow of thine hand. When thou with rebukes dost correct man for iniquity, thou makest his beauty to consume away like a moth. Surely every man is vanity, Salah! Just like the grass that withereth, like the flower that fadeth. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears, for I am a stranger with thee, and a sojourner, as all my fathers were. O spare me, that I may recover strength, before I go hence and be no more. And see, what happens is, in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, this we also got to remember, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, okay? Verses 1 on to verse 6. Well, before we read that in Ecclesiastes 9, let's remember Ecclesiastes 8, verses 4 and verse 8. Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? Hmm. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Jesus Christ, he is the king of kings, lord of lords. Where the word of the, a king is, the authorized version, okay? There's power. What power? Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Jesus Christ. That seal. He is the seal. He is our hope. Until the day of redemption. Okay? Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing. And a wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. Because to every purpose there is time and judgment. Therefore the misery of man is great upon him. Time. It is appointed unto men once to die and after this to judgment. You have time right now. How are you living your life today? In judgment. Okay? You're going to be judged. And see you atheists, it doesn't matter your belief on that at all. When you die you're going to stand before the Lord. Your belief on that is irrelevant. I pity you. Who died in unbelief. Okay? Well, I don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Good luck when you stand before him. Okay? And again, how do you attain to that belief? Just hody do all of a sudden you flip a switch? Give me a break. Crazy. Okay? 
Because to every purpose there is time and judgment, therefore the misery of man is great upon him. For he knoweth not what shall be, for who can tell him when it shall be? Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Okay? There is no man that hath power over the Spirit to retain the Spirit. Think about that in context of these free gracers who save themselves by flipping on a switch and say they believe and they're saved. They're saying they have power over the Spirit to retain the Spirit because they saved themselves. They didn't come the way of the cross, broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, call upon His name. Okay, think about that one. Okay? Neither hath He power in the day of death. And there is no discharge in that war. Neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. We're all going to die. It's the common denominator. That's the one thing we have in common with even the devils, brethren. We're all going to die. And every one of us is going to give an account of himself to God. Every one of us. We who get caught up, we saved at the judgment seat of Christ. Anyone else? All you lost people, especially, you're going to be doing it at the great white throne of judgment. It's appointed on the men once to die, and after this, the judgment. And see, and you keep that in context when dealing with flesh. Why in the wide world of sports entertainment are you afraid of a man who will die? Not granted, like I said, okay? Yes, I'm sure, you know, Paul even said, well, within were, uh, without were fightings, within were fears. Okay, yes, I'm sure. You know, you see 20 guys about to stone you to death, it's like, oh boy, of course, of course. Okay, you might be a little intimidated, yes. But see, we got to remember, always keep in mind, the Lord is in us. What have we to fear? What have we to fear? Ecclesiastes 9. This is 1 out of verse 6. That for all this I considered in my heart even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God. No man knoweth either love or hatred by all them, by, uh, excuse me, no man knoweth either love or hatred by all that is before them. All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, death. Okay? To the good and to the clean and to the unclean. To him that sacrificeth, and to him that sacrificeth, sacrificeth not. As is the good, so is the sinner. And he that sweareth, as he that feareth an oath. Everyone's going to die. There is an evil among all things that are done under the, under the sun. That there is one event unto all, yea. Also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil. And madness, insanity, is in their heart while they live. And after that they go to the dead. For to, him, for to him that is joined to all the living there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. And the dog returns to his vomit again. And the sow to her wallowing in the mire. There's more hope of someone who is still alive. Even though the, there is still hope. The impossible is possible with God. Okay, not at gunpoint, but it, there is still there is still a minute chance, a minute hope for someone who is alive. But when you're dead, for the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. So when that guy that you're afraid of, or that woman that you're afraid of, when they die, everything dies with them. And, then, and some of you devils out there who get cute, well, Paul told us to fear people. Yeah, but let's look at the context of that, shall we? Okay, let's look at the context of that. Some of you cute devils out there. Oh, you're so cute. Paul said to fear all men. Let's look at that. That's What are they doing? They're going to Romans 13. 
It's funny. To try to be disputatious, they will go to Romans 13, but in order, to, but in, you know, in order to justify like church buildings and taking the steel of the Jesuit poignard or whatever, they'll go to Romans 13 and skip certain parts. Strange thing, the way the devils will operate to justify themselves. But Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13, verses 1 on verse 8. Okay? Well, first, let's look at verse 7. Then let's get the context. Because I, I just, you know, the way you devils operate. It's like Paul told us to fear all men. Romans 13, verse 7. Okay? Oh, and, and then um, how come you like to usually stop at verse 3 and don't like to read verses 4 on to verse 6? Go, go away. Go away. Render therefore to all their dues. Tribute to whom tribute is due. Custom to whom custom. Fear to whom fear. Honor to whom honor. So see, there are people we are supposed to fear. Now let's read the context. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that, are, that be are ordained of God. America. Run by the Jesuits. Controlled by the Jesuits. The politicians are selected, not elected. They are ordained of God. Why? For judgment against this wicked, satanic, Roman Catholic Jesuit nation of America. Okay? Yes, they are. Yes. They are put in power. They are allowed to be put in power for judgment against this wicked nation. This is true. Okay? Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. And I've heard of Christians, these Christians, of course, saying, reading that. And so, like, see, I guess we got to roll it up and take the steel of the Jesuit upon you. I guess we... Right? we got to do that. So, see, see, you resist the power. Some will read verse 3. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. What construes what is good and what is evil? Does God? Obviously, yes. The answer is yes. God through the scriptures or your heart? Which one? Okay. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Some will read a, uh, verse 3 and still try to incorporate, you know, doing contrary to what the scripture says. Well, because the government said so, but it's contrary to the scripture. So, it says right here, see, they read up to verse 3. Keep reading now. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. What God has made is good. Everything God has made ever is good okay the law was good but see the law was there to show you that you couldn't attain on the good perfectly that's why you know or else Christ wouldn't have to die bury and rose rise again the third day according to the scriptures and shed his blood on the cross okay all right thou shalt not okay all right let's keep reading okay for he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger, to execute wrath upon them that do evil. And what are some of these things that are good? Let's look at verse 9. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Abortion. Anyone? Thou shalt not steal. If you don't have the scriptures, this is not in your Bible. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Oh, oh this there must be something wrong because... I don't see anything about keeping the Sabbath. Hey, look. You want to keep the Sabbath? Saturday? 
Go for it. Knock yourself up. Is it a requirement as it was heretofore and like it was under the law? No. To the Jew first. And also to the Gentile. Yes, if you're a Hebrew, salvifically today, you do not have to keep the Sabbath in order to be saved, stay saved, and be right with God. Now, you as a Hebrew, should you? I think you should, maybe. But, but, is it a requirement for salvation? No. If you're a Hebrew, you want to keep the Sabbath, go for it. Okay? Go for it. Is it a requirement for salvation? No. You got. You want to keep the Passover? Go for it. And I, the Passover, definitely, I believe every Hebrew should do that. I really do. Is it a requirement today? Play this part of the video, you idiot, you jerk. Okay? Is it a requirement for today? No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Okay? Do I think that the Hebrews should do some of the things? that were commanded them uh, under the law? Sure. Is it a requirement for salvation? No. So that means if they don't do that, okay, that ties in with uh, if anyone judge you by a holy day or something like that, basing it off of scripture, okay? If you want to do that, go for it. Is it a requirement to do that? No. No. Okay? So, Okay? With context that we've seen already in uh, Romans 13. Alright? So let's read verse 4 again. For he is the minister of God to, do, to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. You commit adultery? Legally? Even today? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you have reason to fear because you've gone against what God has said. You see how that works? So when a guy uh, with a when a mason usually with the star on his chest and a loaded firearm come to get you, yeah, because you've done contrary to what the Lord said. Or a guy with a suit and tie giving you a summons or whatever. Yeah, okay, yeah. Thou kill, you kill. Okay? Just kill someone because they disagree with you? Kill your unborn child? Yeah! Yeah! Legally! You know, abortion ought to be illegal for all things. Okay? They like to bring up rape. I know of a woman who I have heard of women who have born children out of rape. It's not the child's fault. You don't punish the child for something that that child didn't have anything to do with. And the rape baby, as they say it, it's not that child's fault. Okay, you as a mother uh, might not love that child because of that association. You can give that child up to someone who will love them. Okay, it's not the child's fault. It's not the child's fault. Okay? All right? You steal? You know, what is that in Scripture where men don't uh, get on a thief if he steals? Like, if you're, if you're poor, you're stealing bread to survive. It's like, well, you're stealing bread just so you can eat. But if they get caught, like Scripture says, they're going to have to pay a hefty sentence. So, yes, stealing. Yes. You fear the revenge of the Lord. Absolutely. Bear false witness? I shudder for these people, for Catholics, for Calvinists, for free gracers, who are going to stand before the Lord at the great white throne of judgment to give an account for everything they have taught in their heresy. I fear for them. I really do. I really do. Thou shalt not covet. George Carlin once said, coveting creates jobs. No, coveting creates division, envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings. And you read in Psalm, what is it, 10? God abhorreth the covetous. Verse 5. 
Verse 5. Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. Render uh, for this, for, for this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. So see, when you want to be cute and say, well, Paul, yeah, what's the context which we just looked over? You're going to break the law of God, okay? Yeah, you have reason to fear a man who's going to come and put you in jail, who's going to take you to court. Yes, you do. Why? Because you've done contrary to what God has said. See, that's, yeah. Remember context, people. Remember the context. Context, context, context. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We're almost done. One's going to be a little bit longer than what has been coming. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 on to verse 6. For though we, saved people, walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, this is a really good way to tell you what carnal means. Fleshly, carnal, okay? But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. What are these strongholds? Casting down imaginations, thoughts, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. Catholicism, Calvinism, free grace-ism, uh, richling-ism, even though he's not the creator of it. He's just... Uh, He's a uh, one who introduced a flavor which certain select people a eh, are the followers up of. Okay, yes, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5, verses 38 and 39. See, when they perish, their hatred, their envy, their love, and all their stuff will be taken away. It won't ascend or descend after them. Okay? Acts chapter 5, verses 38 on to verse 39. Actually, you know what? Let's read 35 on to verse 39. Gamaliel, or Gamaliel, was talking. A doctor, a Pharisee. And he said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Thaddeus, boasting himself to be somebody, I have not sent these false prophets, but yet they ran. They want to, look at me, look at me. Look at the over 100 channels I have, which you don't know about. But look at me, look at me. It's all about them. Okay? To whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who was slain. And all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. And after this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the tax scene. Yes, that's a reference unto the Maccabean revolt. Yes, that is. Yes, that is. Okay? And drew away much people after him. He also perished. And all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now, I say unto you, refrain from these men. And let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest happily ye be found even to fight against God. Well, how are we supposed to know like we covered in the previous video? It takes time. Some men's sins are right there. You know, you keep yourself in the scriptures, the Lord's in you and you're reading the scriptures and you're comparing spiritual things with spiritual, you're like, wait, 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 wait. Dude, you're false. Get away from me. Okay? Who's saved? Some are obvious. 
Some are real smooth, real smooth. It's like a snap, okay? It takes time, observation, okay? Luke 12. Luke 12. We're almost done. Thank you. Luke 12. Verses 1 on to verse 12. We're almost done. Like I said, this one's a little bit longer than what's been coming recently, but I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they drove one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. And that which ye have spoken in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. Sooner or later, if someone's false, they shoot themselves in the foot every time it will be revealed. Okay? And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body. And after that, they have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him, which after he hath killed, hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Fear the Lord. And this is also referenced in Matthew chapter 10. You can go find it if you want. Okay? Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings? And not one of them is forgotten for God. But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, for ye are of, of more value than many sparrows. And I say unto you, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. This is similar unto what we looked at in Timothy, but you've got to remember the context here. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. This is under the law, so you've got to remember that. Okay, But this thing of not fearing man, especially when the Lord is the author of the opportunity. Okay? I spare you. All right? But he that denieth me before men shall be not be denied before the angels of God. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. So many people today, because of these charismatics, when they speak in their satanic gibberish, they're like, you blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Uh, when they said that of Peter in Acts chapter 2, they never said that. Okay, Blasphemy of the Holy Ghost is only capable when Christ himself is physically there. Okay, That's the only time about that blasphemy of the Holy Ghost is mentioned. Why? Because God the Father, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, the Lord is that Spirit, is right there. And to attribute to the devil what the Lord himself was doing, that's blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. Blasphemy of the Holy Ghost only is possible when Jesus Christ is physically right there. Okay? That's the only time. It's not for us today. Don't worry about it. Okay? Okay? The thing about the tongues, we talk about that as well, about the charismatics. Okay? And whosoever, let's read that again, shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, it shall, be, it shall not be forgiven. And when they bring you unto the synagogues, and unto magistrates and powers, take ye no thought how or what ye shall answer, or what ye shall say. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in that same hour what ye ought to say. And remember, under the law, at this present time, the Holy Ghost was not a permanent resident. Why? Because the Lord hadn't died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. you got to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? And this doesn't mean that you don't prepare yourself. What he's saying in verse 11 is spur of the moment, similar to Nehemiah. It's like who was before the king, and the king's like, you've never been sad before. What's going on with you? And Nehemiah's like, Lord, help me here. Well, you know, that's what that's a reference on to. Look at verses 4 and 5 again. 
And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Why didn't the Lord say, fear me? I don't know. I don't know. Because Jesus is the Father. But I don't know why he didn't say that. Maybe because uh, he came as a lamb to die and he wasn't yet come back as the lion. Okay? Mark chapter 9. Verses 43 and verse 48. Incidentally, watch out for people who will say, who will teach veiled Catholicism where they will imply to you that hell and the lake of fire is temporary until someone comes to belief and then they become a saved saint. That's veiled Catholicism. That's similar to what uh, Richling and the Richlingites do. They teach veiled Catholicism. Watch out and hey, you. Yes, I heard about that. Uh, I was notified by, of that by your little obsession with that one dude. Why didn't you bring that up? Why didn't you bring that up? That that dude's teaching uh, a form of purgatory. Why didn't you bring that up? I wonder. But anyway, watch out for hell is eternal. You're not going to get out of hell. You're not going to burn for a while and then be annihilated. It's eternal. Once you go to hell, there ain't no coming out. Well, they come out of hell. Uh, they come out of hell to go to the great white throne to be cast in the lake of fire. You're not escaping the fires of hell, the fire of the lake of fire. It's eternal. You're not going to go there, burn for a while, and then oh, I repent, and then you what? That's Catholicism. That teaching. Why didn't you bring that up? And yes, 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 I was informed of it. Okay, yes, somebody informed me of it. Okay, ask the question about it. Because unfortunately they watch you too. But they, they asked me about that. And they said, never mind. But, fear him. Mark chapter 9, 43 and verse 48. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Worm, I believe, totally is a reference onto the soul. Is our soul worm shaped? I don't think so, but whatever. Okay? And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two feet, than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Why should we fear man who's going to die? Why, why should you fear a woman? Why should we fear men? So, dear saints, the next time you're in an opportunity or an opportunity arises um, and you are afraid of mankind, why? Now granted, like I said, situations vary, but you're saved, born again, converted, they kill you. See, see, our enemies don't have the fear of God, but they have the fear of man. And they use the fear of man to their advantage to gain the, you know, this is their hour. You know, they speak of the world. Therefore, the world hear them. That's why the fake are so popular. Okay? All right? But at the end of the day, that's dust just like you. Granted, it might be a far more refined dust but they're dust nonetheless. Keep these things in mind when you're talking to someone. 
when you're passing out tracts. When the Lord opens an opportunity and you have a sword on you, you better always have a sword on you. When the Lord opens up an opportunity, keep that in mind. If God before us, that will be in the description box. Romans 8, the, you know, for the thing for the video. That will be in the description box. Um, why should you and I fear man? So, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching this. If you do, I love you. Thank you to all you who pray for us, who help us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Don't be afraid of men. I love you. We'll see you in the next video. Incidentally, I might be using the backup channel again. We'll see. Might do like um, some on this channel and expository videos and stuff on the backup channel. And whenever the Lord opens up the door for another Bread of Life podcast, they will be on the backup channel, at least of all fellowship as well. So, anyway, that's going to be it. Going to get this uploaded. Thank you for watching this. If you do, I love you. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.